Polar bears live across the circumpolar Arctic, primarily over the shallow, productive waters of the continental shelf. Their range includes five different nations. Norway, Greenland, Canada, the United States and Alaska, and Russia. This means that international cooperation is essential for understanding and conserving the species. The International Union for Conservation of Nature lists polar bears as vulnerable due to loss of sea ice habitat. Polar bears live pretty much anywhere there is Arctic sea ice. But not all sea ice is the same. It varies in thickness and extent. Generally, thinner sea ice allows more sunlight to filter through, providing a critical ingredient for the photosynthesis of algae which forms at the base of the Arctic food chain, resulting in areas with more ocean productivity. However, thicker sea ice is more stable and easier for polar bears and people to travel on. Scientists also think about sea ice as either multi-year or annual. Multi-year sea ice remains frozen year-round, whereas annual sea ice melts each summer and refreezes each fall. Over the last few decades, we have seen a significant decrease in both the thickness and extent of the Arctic sea ice with an average loss of 13% per decade since 1978. Scientific models predict that if we continue on our current path, we will witness our first ice-free summer in the Arctic before the end of the century. Scientists have classified the types of sea ice in the polar bear's range into four sea ice ecoregions. Seasonal, divergent, convergent, and archipelago. The seasonal sea ice ecoregion is an area where sea ice melts each summer and refreezes each fall. Polar bears in this ecoregion are forced onto land each summer, where they are largely food deprived without access to their marine mammal prey. Melting sea ice due to climate warming is causing this on-land fasting period for polar bears to be longer and longer. The divergent sea ice ecoregion is where sea ice forms along the coast and then is pushed by the ocean currents out into the polar basin. The result is that sea ice here pulls away or diverges from the land. As the sea ice moves away from land, it drifts out over the deeper waters of the polar basin. These deeper waters are less productive, meaning there is less underwater life and less food sources for polar bears. Polar bears in this ecoregion face a difficult but similar situation to the polar bears in the seasonal sea ice ecoregion. They have to choose to either stay on land where there is little to eat or drift out into the polar basin on the sea ice with little to no prey available. If they decide to go with the sea ice and later head for land, they often end up challenged with a long, energy demanding swim. The convergent sea ice ecoregion is where the divergent ice gets pushed by ocean currents and piles up along the coast of northern Canada and Greenland. It converges along the coast. This area makes for great polar bear habitat. The shallow waters are productive and sea ice is continually replenished. The archipelago sea ice ecoregion is an area where narrow channels between islands freeze and remain frozen year-round. This region, along with the northern part of the convergent sea ice ecoregion, will likely become the last sea ice area remaining for polar bears. In order to study and manage polar bears, the five polar bear nations have divided polar bears into 19 subpopulations. Based on the best available scientific information, each subpopulation is designated a trend. Unknown, stable, increasing, or decreasing. The Southern Hudson Bay polar bear subpopulation is estimated to have declined by 17% from 2011 to 2016. The Western Hudson Bay polar bear subpopulation is estimated to have declined by 30% from 1987 to 2011. The Southern Beaufort Sea polar bear subpopulation is estimated to have declined by 40% between 2001 and 2010. If we do not take large-scale action to rethink and reduce our energy use, 
Rampant carbon emissions from burning fossil fuels will continue to trap heat around our planet, disrupting the climate and melting Arctic sea ice. Habitat loss due to climate change is the single biggest threat to polar bears. Without action, polar bears may only remain in the northernmost part of the current range by the end of the century. The good news is that there is still time to act. Conserving sea ice is good for polar bears and people. By working together, we can create a better future for polar bears and for all of us.